I got my coffee. I'm ready to go. What is up, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. Hi. If you are new here, let's introduce ourselves. I'll start. My name is Chase, and I'm a hot mess. I don't know if I said that in the last video, but I'm a hot mess. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I don't know what is going on with me, but I don't I, I didn't know how to set anything up today. I kept forgetting stuff. It's a mess. I feel like we're a little different. We're closer today, I think, but it's good. The lighting's good. Everything's good. This is good. If you like hot messes, if you are a hot mess, then subscribe to my channel. Click that red button and become a member of the Hot Mess Express. This train goes full steam ahead and it what? It doesn't stop. Right, you, you were right. That was right. Um, hi. I hit 50 subscribers. I'm a YouTuber now. I hit 50. That's, I'm a YouTuber and I still keep looking this way and not at the camera. Hi, I'm a YouTuber. Holy thank you guys so much. That is, I am beyond grateful. In all seriousness, jokes aside, I didn't think that anybody would care to watch me sit down, do my makeup, and talk about ghosts. I just didn't think that, I didn't think anyone would care. So it means a lot. I thank you guys so much. I, I really appreciate it. I don't think you guys realize how much I appreciate it. So yeah, there might be a giveaway in today's video. So you'll have to wait till the end of the video to find out if there is or not, but um, there might be. Okay, so to jump right into the video, now that we have the introduction and I don't think I had anything else to say other than just, hi, thank you for getting me to 50. That's it. So last week, what did we talk about? Last week was my favorite video that I've posted so far. It was about the Mothman, the myth, the legend. But yeah, it was about the Mothman and it was my first ever collab with Sam Taylor here on YouTube. If you didn't, why do I keep licking my lips? They're really dry today. If you didn't catch that video, I'll link it down below in the description box, just like I always do. Go check it out, along with a playlist of all the Spooky Saturdays that I have made so far. So, if that interests you, if you, if you haven't seen any of them, if this is your first time seeing me, click that, go watch from the beginning. It's very good, I promise. Well, I'm kind of biased, but, and also they're not that good sometimes. Let's do album of the week real quick before I get into what we're doing today. Um, last week was Kim Petras, Turn Off the Light, Volume 1. That is like the best Halloween album. It's strictly a Halloween themed album and it's so good. It gets you in the mood. It's just a really good spooky album. So if you haven't listened to it, it's super short. It's like eight tracks. So go listen to it. Give it a listen. So this week's album of the week is one that I've never heard before. I've heard a few songs off of it, but I never really listened to it until now. So it is, I'm gonna, oh God, the directors are gonna come for me. Louis Tom, Thompson, Louis Tom, Tomlinson. It's Louis Tomlinson. It's his debut album, it's called Walls. And I think that he's my favorite. That's a lie. And that is the album of the week. So I will be listening to that today while I am filming this in between the stories and everything. And if you want to listen along with me, then do so. So today, what are we talking about? The last few weeks, we kind of veered off from the ghost side of the paranormal and we talked about monsters, the cryptids. So if that's interesting to you, the last four videos are about that. And today we are kind of going back, we are going back to the ghost side of the paranormal, but we aren't doing a place today. So it's October, it's spooky season. Everything is about scare and be scared. And the thing that scares me the most about the paranormal, I can do a hundred videos on places that are haunted and 
I mean, it'll freak me out, but it won't like scare me for the simple fact that I've never experienced it. I've never been there. I've never, or I, I maybe I have been there, but I can come home. I don't know the people personally when I tell the stories. Like, so it might freak me out, but it doesn't really scare me like personal ghost stories do. So I thought for the month of October, the rest of the month, I would sit down and talk about personal ghost stories that people in my life have experienced that I know, I know they're not lying, I trust them. And that's what really spooks me. So I have five, I have five stories for you guys today. I posted on my social media and like no one commented. So thanks a lot, you guys. I do have to, before we get into the video, just give a shout out to Maya because she did reach out and she did want to tell me some of her paranormal stories, but we weren't able to call each other and talk on the phone. Our schedules kind of kept going this way. They kept missing, but I appreciate you, Maya, for reaching out and wanting to tell your story and maybe in a future video, we can talk and figure it out. Um, one of the people I talked to today who I'll talk about, but he actually brought up a good idea of maybe sitting down and filming with the person and have them tell their story while I react. So maybe we could do that. I think that'd be a really cool idea. So I just want to say thank you, Maya, for trying to reach out and give me your story. I really appreciate that. But sadly, we weren't able to, so I won't have those stories for today's video. However, I do have five really cool stories to tell you guys, and they are freaky. So let's get into them, shall we? Also, real quick, I forgot to mention this, but if I am looking down at my phone a lot or I'm like reading off of my phone, it's because I have all the stories on there. I didn't write them down pen and paper like I normally do. I just kept them on my phone. That way I had them all in one spot, so sorry. I'd also like to give this disclaimer because I haven't given this in a really long time, but if you're a skeptic, if you don't believe in this stuff, that's fine. That's fine. Sometimes I don't believe in some of the stuff that I read and hear and see. You don't need to be rude. Don't need to be nasty. I never had anybody be rude or nasty. So like, but I'm just saying, if you're a skeptic, if you don't believe in this stuff, then just sit back and just think of it as a fake story that someone's telling. It's just all fiction. But for those of you who do believe, like me, girl, I'm here to tell you that this isn't fiction. People experienced this stuff and I know these people personally. So this first story that I'm going to tell comes from Vaughn. And I'm not going to say the last names just because why would I? I mean, honestly, <laughs> there's no reason that I would. But me and Vaughn met, uh, I believe, in school. He sent me two stories that are just... Uh, the first one isn't too freaky, but the second one, girl, I would... Mm. So the first one starts back in 2015, where Vaughn and one of his friends were sitting in the basement of his mom's house, and they were watching... TV on this, he said, giant TV. And they were on this couch and he said it was about 4 a.m. And you know, nothing good can happen. What, what does my mom always say? Nothing good happens after midnight or something like that. So Vaughn says that as him and his friend were sitting on the couch watching TV, it was just in the middle of their episode, they see this quote, white cloud shadow. So in my mind, I'm thinking like how a, I don't know, in my mind, I'm thinking this like big, just mist almost. And if I'm wrong, well, hasn't been the first time, probably won't be the last. But in my mind, I just see this like big white, like cloud-like mist. But he says they see a quote, white cloud shadow go from the basement stairs to the other door in the basement and then into the laundry room. And he said that it freaked him and his friend out so bad that they ended up going to sleep. And after it went into the laundry room, it just disappeared. Like there was just nothing there. And so yeah, he said it freaked him out so bad that they ended up going to sleep, which I would have too. I wouldn't have stayed in that basement. No, not for seeing that. I have, I've never seen like a white mist. I have, I have my stories. Oh, she has lived. 
and I will be telling them at some point, I'm not giving anything away, but I will be telling them at some point. But I can say that I've never just seen like a white mist, like a white shadow or anything like that. So I don't know what I do. For some reason in my mind though, like white equals good. So I don't know how I would feel. Like if I would get, I'm sure I'd get freaked out. Like who wouldn't get freaked out when you're sitting in the living room or the basement at 4 a.m. and all of a sudden they just see this white cloud come out of nowhere. This look like just looks bad. I chose an interesting shade to start with. Sorry, I had to go off camera for a second because this shadow, it's not the shadow. I just, I kind of chose the wrong shadow to go into. Um, to start, I chose a super dark shadow. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really mean to do this, but I got scared and I just started blending. You know, I was just thinking maybe no one responded to my comment or my post because no one has had, I wanna know. I honestly wanna know, comment down below if you've ever had like a ghost encounter or anything with the paranormal. It doesn't have to be ghost, just anything. Cause I'm honestly just curious. I'm thinking maybe, <laughs> this is just me thinking, Maybe no one responded to my post because no one has had any paranormal experiences. Or maybe everyone just hates me. So let me know. But like, I honestly, like if you have had one, you don't have to tell me, just let me know. Like, oh yeah, I've experienced something. I know Sam, I was talking to her last week about this video and she was like, oh, I don't have any and I don't want any. She's like, I believe in it, but I don't want to stir it up or anything, which a lot of people kind of feel like they believe in it, but they don't really want an experience because they don't want to agitate it or provoke it. They don't want that. So I'm just curious if any of you, like if you do believe, do you have any experiences? So the second story that Vaughn sent me is definitely the scariest one in my opinion, because it has to do with him being asleep. And for me, that's a wrap. I don't do well. <laughs> when I'm asleep and something scary happens. Like that just, it, I, it's happened to me a, a few times where I was asleep and then I got awoken by something. I don't know how I do with this because it kind of freaked me out. So, so Vaughn calls this a lucid dream. To me, it kind of sounded like sleep paralysis. I probably should have asked him and elaborated more, but I didn't think about it. So this was 2017 and Vaughn said that he was sleeping in his bed. That's a good place to sleep. And Vaughn told me that he uh, took melatonin this night, which I take melatonin, not regularly, but I do take it here and there. And it's just to help you sleep. If you have issues sleeping, you can get pills or gummies for melatonin. I do know what that is. And he said that he woke up in the middle of the night out of nowhere. And he said that wasn't really unusual because melatonin did that to him. Whenever you would take it, sometimes he would just wake. It, it, good morning. And he says that when he wakes up, it, there's nothing really out of the ordinary at first. But as he's starting to wake up, he sees a lady in the corner of his room. And that's just like, no ma'am, no ma'am. That is terrifying. <gasps> No, and that's not even where it, where it, that's not even, that's just the beginning. So then he describes the woman to me and he says that she was wearing like a white dress and she, he said kind of hanging like the grudge. So in my mind, I'm seeing like a white dress with hair hanging down over her face. The grudge scared me. As a kid, I'm not even going to front to you. That movie terrified me as a child. I mean, I wasn't really a child. I was a teenager, but still it was so scary um and this is where i makes me think maybe it was sleep paralysis and again i didn't like ask him all these questions because i didn't think about them until right now so vaughn if you're watching if you want to answer them down below or message me whatever um he says that he couldn't move like it was like he was stuck in place which to me kind of sounds like sleep paralysis i've never experienced it so i don't know and also i don't want to experience it and he said he was so scared that he just like, you know, closed his eyes and he forced himself to keep them closed until he fell asleep. And the next morning he woke up, it was 8 a.m. and he was getting ready for school. And he went downstairs to talk to his mom and he told her about what happened the night before. And after he shares this information with her, she tells him that 
his great grandmother who died like years before this died on the same day that this happened which I just find a coincidence and I'm sure that's what he was getting at too is he found it a coincidence that the same day that his grand his great grandmother passed away he sees this woman in the corner of his room that now that is what gets me a woman in the corner of my room no no I'm like scared to see that I I'll throw in this here we put a salt bowl you can't see it because it's like all the way over there but we put one in at the entrance way to my room because salt bowls was because salt bowls are supposed to cleanse you and take the negative energy away as you walk into a room right so we got it for that but also because I would always see figures in my doorway at night like if I were to lay on my bed which is right over here and look at my doorway I would see like heads poking out around the corner I would see just shadows start materializing in the corner of like my room in the door area and they would just stand there they wouldn't go away even after I would blink and so a lot of it could just be my eyes playing tricks on me however I do have one nightlight right there I have a bath and body works nightlight right there that's a wallflower and I sleep with my tv on so it's not like really ever super dark in my room for that reason I mean I guess it could it could be that it could be my eyes just playing tricks on me but it really um scared me and so I don't know what I'd do if I saw just a woman in my room in the corner just standing there watching I don't know okay I'm back sorry I had to try to fix this eyeshadow which I didn't really do a great job and I put mascara on I don't hate the eye look so those were Vaughn's stories and again I want to say thank you to Vaughn for sharing them with me also can we talk about two of us by Louie um yeah that song makes me very sad if you need a good cry listen to that one. Oh, I keep thinking about it that's just such a sad song poor Louie the next person that I have who is so gracious to share their ghost stories is one of my best friends Jasmine she has been on my channel twice um the first time was in the infamous look what you made me do cover if you haven't seen that go watch it it is so good and i'm not just saying that because i'm in it and the second time she was on my channel was when i filmed that mukbang slash true crime video so i actually have three stories for her i she only sent me two but then i remembered one that she had while i was with her and i thought i'd just talk about that one real quick now this one I will start off by saying this could have just been a trick of the eyes it could have been you know whatever we don't know if it's paranormal so this was probably about 11 o'clock at night yes we are night owls and me and Jasmine I was taking Jasmine home after hanging out and we were at this four-way intersection there's lights at each stop duh, that's what make it makes it four ways and we had a red light so we were sitting there and the light was about to turn green when this car like came from this way and then turned like towards us and Jasmine was looking straight ahead and I was kind of looking out the driver's side window when this car came by and they were going fast like they had to be going 55 in like a 35 they were just speeding go speed racer go speed racer is that a song I don't think it is maybe it is maybe I just made that up okay the world just fell apart I dropped my beauty blender and as soon as I got it back up my iPad fell and as soon as I got the iPad back up I dropped my beauty blender again anyway back to the story so I was looking out of the driver's side window and she was looking straight ahead and this car goes zooming by and I jokingly was like wow like they're really speeding they better slow down Jasmine I forget what she said but she was like oh yeah like I thought they were gonna hit that man or something like that and I was like huh the, the long and short of it because I didn't ask her about the experience and even though I was there I'm dumb so I don't remember all of it but 
Pretty much, while she was looking straight ahead and I was looking to the left, right before this car came hurtling by, she saw a man walking across the street. And then once the car went by, he was gone. And like, we looked, we sat there, our headlights were gone, there was no one there. I didn't see a man and I would have seen him too. I mean, I was right there. And that's what she's like, yeah, like I, I cause and she said like, no, I know I saw a man because I remember thinking to myself, he better go because lights will turn green and then if a car comes, it's gonna hit him. I don't know. I don't know if that's uh, paranormally, if it's just kind of her eyes playing tricks on her. It was late at night, it was 11 o'clock and it was dark. And so maybe her eyes were just joshing her and they were just playing a little prank. I'm really red today. But I thought it was kind of creepy and weird and a uh, freaky deaky. So I thought I'd share it in this video and just see what you guys think. So the two times that Jasmine has had experiences that she honestly and truly believes were the paranormal and aren't something that we're just kind of like, well, maybe, was at work. So she works at a famous footwear and I've always just found, maybe I should do a video sometime, I've always found it interesting like haunted Walmarts or haunted like Toys R Uses, like things like that, like retail stores or fast food places that are haunted, I don't know why. That stuff just always has kind of fascinated me. And so yeah, she works at a famous footwear and the two stories she has have actually happened at famous footwear. So the first story that she has was two years ago and it was around the time that she started working at famous footwear. And her and the, uh, I think they're called like the store director, it was her and Jasmine, they were the only ones in the building. And they were going over something called a fit planner. Um, I don't know what that is and I didn't ask because it's not really important, it's just they weren't like out moving around the floor. They were together doing something. And Jasmine said that no one else was in the store. It was just those two. When all of a sudden they heard something drop, like a thud that fell onto the floor. And they're all like, what is that? Like, what, what is going on, you know? Cause no one else is supposed to be in the store and they didn't knock anything over. They go out on the floor to look and they see that a boot had fallen off the shelf. A boot that was up as like a display piece had fallen. Now Jasmine said what was weird about that is that the boot was kind of pushed back on the display area so it couldn't have just kind of toppled over because and that's also I mean I believe that because like no one was walking around the store no one was near the boot it had been fine all day and she said it's not like it was towards the edge of the like box display thing that it was on it was right in the middle, almost towards the back of the wall. So for it to have fallen off, someone had to have went over and pushed the boot off of the box because there was no way that it was just gonna fall off by itself. So the last encounter that Jasmine has for us is one that I know well. <laughs> and it's because when this happened, I remember her texting me and being like, Chase, guess what just happened? She was shook, honey. So this also happened at Famous Footwear. And this time she was the only person in the building. I wanna say this happened last year. I believe is when she sent me the picture and told me the story. But she was what's called recovering the men's converse aisle. And what that means is she was pretty much just tidying it up, making sure that everything was turned the right way, making sure the boxes were in the right place, just, you know, making it look nice and neat. Now Jasmine was the only person working at this time. There were no other workers in the store. And Jasmine said there was only one customer in the store. And never once did the customer come over to the Converse aisle or anything like that. They walked from the store, got their shoes, and they went up to the register. And Jasmine walked up there and she cashed them out. And she had her back turned to the Converse aisle. That way, you know, she could talk to the customer and get them out of there. And again, I will exaggerate, there was no one else in the store but Jasmine and this customer. When Jasmine was not with the customer, she was over at the Converse area, and that was it. No one else was over there at the Converse area. And then when Jasmine and the customer were together, that was it. There was no one else in the store. They were together, and that was it. And then Jasmine watched the customer leave, and she walked back over to the Converse aisle area, and when she walked back over there to kind of finish up what she was doing, all of the Converse that were on what's called the bin, which is kind of like the display area, 
were turned facing the wrong way. So like if I'm Jasmine, they're supposed to be facing this way. They were all facing that way. And there was one turned sideways. And Jasmine sent me a picture of it. So I'll post the picture now so you can see it. And so you see that all the shoes are facing like to, towards like, I don't know what way it'll be. For me, I'm looking at it. They're facing towards the right. They're not supposed to be facing that way. And so the one that is sideways was completely insane because it wasn't like that when she did it. None of them were. They were all facing the right way. Which I think is so freaky for something to happen that quick. Just like she turned it back for just a few minutes to cash a guest out and it happened just like that is just uh, and then to be in the store alone and you have no one to like talk to about it. No, ma'am. I just think that would be so freaky to work in a haunted place. So right now where I work, I work at a Target, but the place that I worked at before Target, I worked at a Panera Bread and that place was definitely haunted. I'll just tell you some stories while we're here. I had a few. One of the things that happened to me while I was there, we have these big cutting boards and they're like long to the point where they wouldn't even fit on the sinks. And there were like three big sinks and this like big area and they barely fit on it. So when they would bring them back, they would have to sit them up against the sink. So they were leaning up against the sink area and I hadn't walked near them. No one had, I was busy doing dishes. And all of a sudden, I like turned around to, I think I was going to grab them. Yeah, I was. I was going to grab them. And these cutting boards, it looks like someone put one hand on the back, one on the front, and then flipped it. And then it fell. And like I watched it in air go, whew, and then fall. So before I was like, uh, and I called my manager and I was like, girl, what is going on? And the other thing that happened while I worked there was that it was just one night I was on dish again. I was normally on dish there and I was just, you know, chilling, doing dishes. And I had a question for my manager and I didn't know where she went. So I was just kind of standing back there, doing my thing, doing my little dishes. I almost fell off this chair. I was doing my little dishes. I see what I thought was her out of the corner of my eye. So I turned around and I was like, oh, what's her name? I'm not gonna tell you to say her name. And I was like, where'd she go? So I walked over to where I saw her and she wasn't there. And I was like, where is she? And she was up front on like where they make the food and stuff. So I don't know. And again, it could just be my eyes playing tricks on me, but a lot of people, like the bakers especially, cause the baker, the cause the bakers work at Panera there, there were no one else is there. And I know that one baker in particular, her name's Megan, she had a lot of experiences that like one night she was alone in the restaurant and she saw someone walking in the dining room area and she was like, who's in here with me. And when she went and looked, there was no one in the restaurant. So now let me tell you, I saved the best for last. Girl, this story, when I got told this at work, shook me and I knew I had to tell it in today's video. This last story comes from Haley, who I met at Target. And when I tell you she has the scariest one, I mean, she has the scariest one. So her story starts when she was growing up. Her and her family lived in this house for 12 years. And growing up, she told me that she always felt like something was off in the house, but she really wasn't sure what it was. She has always kind of got this weird feeling. And I've had that feeling before too. I'll tell that story in a later video, but I, I know what she means. Like I, I've had that feeling where just something didn't really sit right with you in the house. And so that when she was younger and she would sleep in her room, she would always see a man in her closet. And she told her parents this and they were just kind of like, oh girl, you're so crazy. Like there's no man in your closet, which again, I have experienced. And for me, it was just a dream. But for her, it was reality. Like she was actually seeing this when she was trying to go to sleep at night. I'm gonna leave you on a little cliffhanger for a second. I'm gonna do my lower lash line and then I'll be right back to finish up Haley's story. Okay, I'm back. Lower lash line's done. I just did something really simple, just a little wash of brown under it because I didn't feel like doing a whole big thing. This eye look is kind of a lot to begin with anyway. So yeah, Haley is growing up in this house. They lived there for 12 years. She feels like something's kind of off and she keeps seeing this man in her closet. 
And she tells her parents this and they just think that she's crazy. They're like, okay, whatever. And eventually they do end up moving out of the house. And once they move out of the house, her parents tell her what she was seeing was real. <laughs> and the house was haunted. Um, there was a man that lived in the house before them. So now this is gonna be a little trigger warning for people um, because this does involve suicide. So this is your trigger warning. I would either click off now or skip ahead. So it turns out before Haley and her parents moved into this house, a man lived there and he committed suicide. He shot himself um, in the side yard of the house. And Haley believes that that's who she was seeing in her bedroom at night, which I, I concur. But that's not where it ends because still to this day, Haley has dreams of this man. And on top of her having dreams of him, she's also seen him on multiple occasions throughout her life, even after they moved out of the house. All right, sorry, I put my lipstick on and this looks really good. I'm actually living for this look. Haley is not the only person to have seen this man though. Her fiance has also seen this man and she said when they first got together, he started seeing him, but he didn't want to say anything to Haley because he thought that Haley would think that he was crazy. And finally he brought it up and Haley was like, oh no, I've been seeing this stuff too. Like I've been seeing it since we moved in this one house. And he didn't even know that this was going on. So she thinks that when Haley and her fiance got together that this guy was kind of angry and that he didn't really like her fiance, but that eventually he got used to him. And she said that it's settled down now, but he's still there. Sometimes she'll still have dreams about him. Sometimes she'll still see him, same with her fiance and that it's settled, but that he's attached to her. That's what she thinks, that he's attached to her and that he's never harmed her physically, but he does scare her and sometimes, oh my God, my hair is scaring me. But sometimes he does kind of affect her depression and kind of affect her emotions, which I know that ghosts who have died in mysterious or sudden or people have been like murdered and stuff, can, they can do that sometimes. They will kind of play with your emotions. So girl, that's it. That's the end. This is the final look. I kind of like it. It came together. It really did. That highlight. Ooh. That's it. Those are the ghost stories that you guys sent him. There were some good ones. That last one, Haley's story, I can't imagine. That is terrifying. To have a ghost attached? No. Uh-uh. I wanted to thank you guys for getting me to 50 subscribers. I can't believe I'm at 50. I still can't. So because of that, I wanted to give you guys something. So one, yes, count them, one lucky winner will be winning a $20 gift card to wherever they choose. Now I know it's not like 50, like the big YouTubers do, but a bitch is broke, he's poor. So you're getting, 20 is good. So this giveaway will run from right now. This is being uploaded Saturday, October 10th. And this giveaway will run until Saturday, October 24th. So you have like two weeks to enter. And on October 24th in that video, I will announce the winner on the video. Now there are only two things that you have to do to enter. The first one is be subscribed, of course, and I will be checking. So be subscribed, it's for my subscribers, so be subscribed. And the second thing that you have to do is comment down below. I don't care what you say, but you need to comment something. And then if you're comfortable with it, you can also comment like the Instagram or Snapchat, something that I can reach you on, whatever. That can't be the comment though. You need to comment something along with that. And that's how you enter, that's it. That's it. I'll put the names of the people who enter into a random name generator and then whoever wins will get a $20 gift card to wherever they so choose. So the giveaway starts now. Comment down below, like, you don't have to like the video to enter, but it'd be nice if you liked it. I mean, yeah, subscribe, you need to be subscribed. And of course, share the video, ho. Share it. Next week, I'm very excited for the video. I hope you stick around. I love you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye guys. Mwah.